What's going on? Happy Friday, everybody. and Welcome in to the Brass Ring Media Podcast, the free version, the flagship edition of the show. Man, it's good to be here. Tyler, what's going on? Hey, not much. Good to be here. I, I did something we don't usually do. I ran a poll on our YouTube page. I'm trying to pull that up. So if, if we get two different feeds here, I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, but yeah, good to be here. Good to talk some wrestling, and uh, yes, yeah, let's do it. You're in the you're in Come the here. pod once again. I'm in the pod. I'm in the pod. You know, had some day job stuff to do. Uh, had to head on head on into the office, but uh, yeah, taking a quick quick break and and talking a little wrestling with you guys. Um, thanks to everybody who's joining us live. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, this is the Brass Ring Media Podcast, and it is for Friday, October 27th, 2023. We are live every Friday, late morning, just like this with the free version of our show. It's a great way for everybody out there to kind of check into what we do and how we talk about wrestling, how we cover wrestling. Um, and if you want to engage more with us and you want more podcasts and you want more content and you want more of brass ring media style wrestling coverage, you got to become a member. Uh, and you can do that by heading over to Patreon, patreon.com backslash brass ring media uh, for only $4 a month. You guys get full access to all of our content. No tears. There's no tears. There's one tier. You can get everything that we write for our Brass Ring Media newsletter. You get all of our free bonus podcasts that we do weekly. You get access to all of our pay-per-view review shows. You get access to our Discord community, which has turned out to be a blast right now. Over there, we're doing a uh, kind of a uh, a best of Sting conversation um, and uh, might be reviewing some matches uh, together as a group. We'll see, but it's a really fun environment. And if you don't want to talk wrestling on Twitter, I don't blame you. You can come to us and we are uh, building quite the world over there. So uh, Brass Ring Media on Patreon. If you just want to keep getting free content, there's ways to do that too. You can subscribe to our YouTube page and you can also subscribe to our podcast, which is this show in podcast form minutes after we wrap up here live. Um, and then also our Substack newsletter. We've got free content that goes out on our newsletter weekly as well. So lots of ways for you to engage with us. Um, but the best way is during these darn shows. Zach is in the chat right now. Sean is in the chat right now. And um, let's have uh, let's have some fun. Tyler, Ric Flair is back. Not back. He's in AEW. Um, and he is going to be along for the ride, it seems, as Sting wraps up his uh, as Sting wraps up his career. Um, there is <laughs> a lot of angles to break this thing down. You went live um, on the YouTube page and cut a nice little short video about about Ric Flair and kind of teased your your opinion on the whole thing. But I'm curious, just like we need to break it down on a couple of different levels. But yeah. high level, where are you at? with Ric Flair being a part of this sting thing. Mm -hmm. I also teased your opinion without talking to you. So hopefully that was okay, but I, I, love I know you well. I, love I think I know you well enough to know a little preview for the show. Basically <clears throat> this is where it was. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I think most people would agree. I see it's already in the chat. I think Sean said it here. You know, I like, he likes Flair and AW because of the sting stuff. And I, I'm in that camp. Like, obviously there's a lot of bad, stuff with rick flair you don't need to go searching very deep i think you would just google rick flair you're probably on the oh, first yeah. page of google before you oh, find yeah. some some stuff and of a different era you know you can do that with a lot of um stuff right and it's not too it's not doesn't make it better right but i think there's a lot of people of that era right if you're talking musicians you're talking politicians you're talking pop culture icons outside of wrestling like a lot of People of that era have did some pretty important things when there was not social media, et cetera. And, and you know, that's been the whole kind of last decade is, is dealing with that culturally and where you slot that person. Right. So we've dealt with it with him, with Flair, or with with Hogan, I mean, and, and lots of others. And Sting's not been one of those guys that's had those things come up about him, which I think helps the legacy even more so um, looking yeah. out 20, 20, 30 years from now. But, um, you know. Sting is not a guy who I would say would not, you know, his biggest flaw, I don't know if you would agree, probably would, 
is his mic work in prolonged stints and also his facials. Um, trying to sell anything besides being a badass has not been his strong point. And you could tell when Flair came out, it seemed like an actual total surprise to yeah. uh, to Sting and what it meant to him, all that stuff. So that helped correlate it. And, you know, <clears throat> if you have told me that would have happened Wednesday afternoon, I would have been, um, you know, I would have been a bit a hard no. And I would have been, it, it would, it makes you look like, you know, TNA 2004 or something. Right. And, and you look like the lesser than number two, getting in all these old legends and telling the story. But if, and, and this is a big, if, if he's only there for this run with Stang and he's there to get sympathy, right? Have Christian and his goons beat, beat him up. And you get sympathy that, that then Sting doesn't have to look less than and comes in and kind of saves the day for Flair, who's his buddy, all that sort of stuff, right? That works. As long as Flair's gone at the end of this and not hanging around and, you know, doing it, all the Ric Flair stuff, I think it's a win. But, you know, I'm also not going to say that AEW has had a sterling reputation with telling good long-term stories and dropping people or not dropping people at the right time. So, so see how it goes. But as of one episode and one segment, I thought it worked well. And, you know, I also like Christian's promo against him. (laughs) Dad, but he talked that, you know, there's no God because Ric Flair didn't die 20 years ago, which was, uh, was pretty good. And they actually got good camera work for once in AEW. Cause that shot as it was happening was awesome. And Flair did a great job there. So I thought it was a good segment. Yeah, I did too, honestly. I don't know. I know. Uh, I think you kind of thought we might disagree, but I, I, I think like on the wrestling level, you know, this worked and it, and I think it will continue to work. I, yeah. I, I really do. I think that, you know, having Sting along or, uh, excuse me, Ric Flair along for this ride gives the, gives the whole story and like the whole Sting angle was something that, that, I wanted to see, which is like longevity, which is like, Hey, okay. Audience, you need to be paying attention to this. Cause look, he's going to have these matches and Ric Flair is involved too. And, and I think they're putting some juice behind it and giving people a reason to uh, pay attention to it on a, on a week to week basis. And I think that's, I think that's important. So I like, I like that. And I, and look, Flair, say what you want about Ric Flair. And, and I'm going to in about a minute, but you know, he, no one ever said he can't work in a wrestling ring. I mean, like on a lot of different levels. I mean, obviously he his days as an in ring worker are over. But I mean, that guy knows how to sell, man. I mean, part of his whole shtick and the whole his whole like the Ric Flair match is predicated on on selling and on facial expressions and on sympathy as a baby face. Like, like I think it, that he still is extremely functional in that in that role. Um, and I certainly think that's how they're going to use him. I mean, I, that I think is what we're set up for here. Like, you know, Ric Flair is going to be the guy that gets beat on, you know, uh, by heels to get to, to get sting or to get at sting. And, um, and then like when his career is up and when they finish the, the whole sting retirement story at revolution 2024, Ric Flair is going to be there. And that's going to be a, that's going to be a part of it. So I think as long as it stays this way, I like it. If we start to see like, Oh, Ric Flair is going to turn heel. Like, you know, I'm good on that. I, I, I don't need to see that. Um, but so far, so far that that's not, it doesn't seem like we're going down that road. So with all that said, so, you know, from a wrestling perspective, I like it from a, from an outside of the ring perspective, I think Tony Khan has to be careful with this kind of thing. Like you, Ric Flair's got a lot of baggage, a lot. Mm -hmm. And like you said, and articulated well, it's not hard to find. (laughs) It's really not. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, when you hear about Ric Flair and you read about him and you watch like the 30 for 30, I mean, it's, you know, he's a, uh, an alcoholic and you know a womanizer at best and but then you see that dark side of the ring episode though the the plane ride from hell episode and you've got that flight attendant on camera talking about what happened to her 
like I think that painted Ric Flair in an entirely different light. And it's like one of those things where like, yeah, you know it, but now that you're hearing it, like straight up from the source and from the victim, like different story. And I think Tony Khan needs to be careful for that reason, just in general, like you don't want to be hiring those kind of people, but you also need to be careful because days ago, Tony Khan went on a Twitter tirade ragging on Vince McMahon for his sexual misconduct escapades. And then days later, you're hiring Ric Flair, who has just as many, if not way, way more. And I think just as a leader of the company, you want to be cognizant of the hypocrisy within that um, because it will come, it will come back to bite you. And, you know, I, I just, it's just like, I like the angle, but I roll my eyes just at the context around the angle because it's like, man, how tone deaf are you to say those things and bring this guy in and, and have that be, have that be what it is. And, you know, call me jaded on Ric Flair, but I am, I mean, that, that the dark side of the ring thing hit hard. And, uh, I just, with Ric Flair out there doing this is just good to make sure the world doesn't forget that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And <clears throat> another reason why you shouldn't tweet if you own a major entertainment yes, product, right. uh, cause then you set yourself up for this, right? Like the thing, well, I mean, it was like the, it was a double or nothing 2019 where, Tony was like, yeah, Hulk Hogan is not allowed ever backstage because of his racist remarks, all that sort of stuff, right? So right. when you draw lines in the sand like that, and then there's like an equivalent that you do let come in, you know, it just, it's an unforced error. And Tony's the king of that in the wrestling space. So yeah. just another, yeah. another one of theirs there as well. But yeah, I mean, and like, even like we both like the segment, if you and I were in Tony Khan's position, would we have... Sting, like if Sting asked us to do this or if you thought this was a good idea, would you still do it? Like I wouldn't for the reasons you just well, laid out, right? Yeah. Well, no, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. But if I was going to do it, like I'd promote it. <laughs> like if I was going to be a dirty promoter and, and hire Ric Flair, like I'd want to get something out of it. Like yeah. I, I, it, it was unfathomable to me that Ric Flair is on your TV and nobody knew about it going in. Like, I, you yeah. want some surprises on the show. I get that. But this show did 737,000 viewers or whatever it was, 47,000. Like, you know, like, damn, like, promote something. This this would be the time, like, you to, to get what you want to get out of Ric Flair and to make this sacrifice worth it. Like, you got to promote it. And it was a good yeah. enough angle and a good enough segment where I think it would have attracted, like it would have maintained some viewers. If you were like, mm -hmm. Oh, I want to see what Ric Flair's up to. Oh, cool. Like he's, he's going to be with sting and stings retiring. Oh, I want to follow that. I'll watch next week. Like, you know, that's the value in Ric Flair. Like the surprise is cool, but I mean, this would be the, this was the time where it's like, okay, Ric Flair does not need to be a surprise. Like, like, you know, just, just promote them. Put them out there. Yeah. Have them do you think that in. was? Do you think that was the first time Ric Flair's ever been on cable under a million viewers? <laughs> <laughs> yes, probably, for sure. Oh man, so, that's just trouble. another another callback to what you said there earlier. I do have the worst booking possible for Ric Flair. If you want to hear that, um, oh yeah, you know I love that's to give sure. worst case that's scenarios. Here. That's here. Yeah. yeah. So my worst case scenario for Flair is either if it's at some point before March or he's extended afterwards is some interaction with C.J. Perry where he's a creepy old man to the hot woman oh, who's God. trying to be a manager and then him and Miro have beef, but he's like a creepy old man to her and she kind of like plays into it. That's my worst booking at the moment that I can think of. So, um, to give that's, everyone over there a bad idea. That's, um, dude, that's pretty bad. That's yeah. really bad. Because <laughs> it mean, leads into like all the really bad good. things that we talked about not leaning into and not making aware of. Unless... You're you're playing, you know, 4D chess, and you want to make Ric Flair look like the, you know, the guy you think he is on screen, and that's the end of his legacy in the wrestling <laughs> business. But I don't think that's the uh, that's the case. No. Also, not a great way to attract talent long term to your company, too. So I don't think that's the well, case. Yeah, 
yeah. I mean, look, like like I said, I mean, I think Ric Flair, I mean, was good in that segment. He really was, you know. And I think like it's telling. I think when you watch him work, and then you watch some other people in that company work, yeah. it's like there there's clearly a difference in mm-hmm. talent and in feel and and just performance and. Rick has that. Like, there's no doubt about that. Like, there's there's no doubt. I think he made that segment better. I think he made the Sting retirement tour better. Um, and clearly, that was the that was the goal. But I mean, just business wise, I'd promote it more, man. Like, get him out there. Like, Ric Flair is going to be on Dynamite. Like, tune in, watch. Um, so yeah. So we'll see how this goes. I don't want to see Ric Flair wrestle. I absolutely don't want to see him wrestle. I've got and, and Ric Flair from an in-ring perspective is one of my favorites of all time. I mean, I think he's just like his, you know, his run is one of my favorites. I actually just uh, finished reading Tim Hornbaker's book uh, on on Flair, and so I'll be reviewing that for members um, on our on our Substack most likely. Um, fascinating career, tremendous wrestler, huge draw, major star. Don't need to see him wrestle anymore. Seriously. Like with Flair, I think there's always going to be that temptation for him. I I can get in the ring. I I can, I can do that. No, 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 no. Like absolutely not. I don't care under what circumstances tag match, 10 man tag, 20 man tag. No, absolutely not. No way. No, how that cannot happen. Agreed. Um, you know, kind of like, I don't know, not that we don't want to get into the goat conversation I kind of did in my piece about staying, but like, you know, like, let's say a Tom Brady, Michael Jordan equivalent, whatever, right? Like, you don't want to see, you don't want to see Tom Brady come back and play. No. I mean, honestly, for, for the, in the XFL, right? That's the equivalent we're talking about here with WWE to AEW. Yes. Not, yes. not so much, but maybe let's say if, if Tom Brady still had some eligibility left at Michigan, and they need some help because they're stealing signs and cheating for the last two years. That's why they've been so good. Sorry, that's my Ohio State bias coming in here for the show. <laughs> I was going to say. But, um, everyone probably does it, so I'm just kidding. But uh, they just got caught. But, uh, you know, like if Tom Brady had eligibility and then like at 40, was he 45, I think? 45. 46. Yep. So, you know, if he came and played for Michigan, they'd be like, come on, man, it's not the same. You don't want to go out that way too, right? It's that whole thing right. with, with that legend and, you know, all that stuff, so. Got some uh, some anti Brady folks in the chat. Sean Peyton Manning will always be better than Brady. Sorry, man, Sean. That's fighting words for a lot of people, my friend. That's fighting. Oh, what did I, what did I put out in the universe? Did I put something out in the universe? Oh, Flair wrestling again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Zach. I don't know why I did that, but you know, if it's in my I mean, head, it's in Tony Khan's head already. They do have the entire. Now everyone signed to AEW. That was part of his last match, right? It was him and Andrade versus Jarrett and. Uh, and Jay Lee, yep. Yeah, his former. Well, I don't know if that's official, right? But his his former son-in-law. So, yes. And also, one official, thing. Yes. One thing to keep in mind here is the power of Conrad Thompson. Once again, that was like a big sticking point early in the company's history. And now, like the only one that has not appeared on AEW TV of his main roster of podcast partners is uh, Kurt Angle. So be on the lookout for Kurt Angle at some point to appear in AEW. Oh, and well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put that past him either. Like, yeah. for sure not. For sure not. Um, dude, what did you make of the number this week for AEW? The, the, the viewership? I mean, it was stiff yeah. competition. I get that, but. Yeah, what was it up against Game 7 of the. Game 7 and NBA yeah. basketball. Yeah, and NBA. And how? Um, you know, I think that AEW, for a long time, the most ratings thing that I've subscribed to is that the rating has always been a, not a mirror image, but a close to a mirror image of how good the show was the previous week, right? Like the 900,000 for a bad show, I thought, last week was because the show prior to it was good, the, the right. one head-to-head with NXT. And this yeah. one was good. You know, last week was not a good show, so you had a drop-off of about 150,000 people. I would guess that next week we'll be in the high sevens, low eights, because this episode I thought was pretty good comparatively. So that's... Um, you know, that's what I think happens with like people, you know, the seven days always pretty much the same. It just depends like if people need to watch it live or not live. So that number is dictated by 
how much juice is coming out of last week? Do I really need to sit here and watch this for two hours on Wednesday? You know, they're in Philly for literally game seven in Philly, which is like a, a tough, you know, the crowd. Was good. But that yeah. was like, I didn't realize that till just now. So that's something. So you lost a lot of that market for that reason. But yeah, I mean, just AW, right? Like it's, it's about the number they're at the range is 650 to 800. If it's out of that range, I think it's noteworthy below or above. But besides that, that's kind of what they've been. And they've been that way for a long time. And, yeah. you know, SmackDown's certainly going to go down in a year. And Raw is going to continue to, you know, chip away. So when, you know, AW and NXT are doing 500,000 and Raw's doing 1.2 million and SmackDown's doing 1.2 million in two, three years from now, whatever it's going to be, like, we're going to have the same discussion. But it's kind of just my take on ratings is it's still better than put law law and order SVU on there or some, something you paid for some, uh, you know, some game show that I was going to watch that you paid way too much money for. If you're a a broadcast partner. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, like, you don't, obviously you don't want to see that if you're, if you're Tony Khan, but Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the range, you know, that's the range now. And I feel like that's more the story. Like the range keeps getting smaller and smaller. Like that's bad. Mm -hmm. Um, And I and and I just I don't know. I like part of it is I think you're spread way too thin. I mean, Collision is just not helping. I mean, if you had one show and you were going to do Kenny Omega versus MJF on Dynamite, like that to me, like that you know, that's a match that can that'll draw you in the nine hundreds most likely. You know, but for but for, but putting it on Collision, you know, it's going to yeah. be on. It's going to be in like the low high 500s, maybe if they can get into the 600s and 700s, like that'd be huge. Um, so it's just that's like a that's when I when I talk about like spreading your resources too thin, like this is what that is. Like, mm-hmm. um, and I think you're seeing it with these kind of ratings, I think you're seeing it with ticket sales too. Um, as a you know, as a, as a good barometer of hey, like you know, what I. It's not imperative. I can, I can, I can watch Game Seven live because I'll just catch Collision, you know, yeah. on over the weekend, you know, uh, so, you know, something like that. I mean, people are making those those decisions, and it, I think there's that there's context too. Like, I don't think, you know, Warner Media is like doesn't know that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that they didn't think, oh, hey, we might splinter our audience a little bit if we have the second show. So. I think you have to take that into account too. That like, I don't think any of this is a surprise to them. Um, but you know, we'll see what it means in terms of Tony Khan securing that, that TV deal. I'm still surprised that they haven't announced anything yet. That, I, I don't know, man. Yeah, it seems like <clears throat> this might be a good play by WWE, like not announcing theirs. Like they're kind of forcing AEW to maybe announce theirs before they announce the raw and NXT deals coming up to like yeah. totally smother them. Um, as getting rid of events and stocks up like 5% in the past couple of weeks. So that, that obviously helped that stock. So that might be another thing. So also one thing here is like, I don't know if Tony Khan's, you know, he's obviously getting advice from somebody or if he just has accumulated what he thinks is good business sense over the years. But I think it's a good example of the creep of like, like spreadsheet math to like prove your point. I think everyone's dealt with that in their life to like justify something. And that's like, you know, I'm sure Tony Khan does a lot of the like, well, between the three shows, we do way more viewership than we did with just Dynamite. And between all the ticket sales between the two shows and now the monthly pay-per-views, as we got our December one. So we're confirmed, you know, six months and six pay-per-views. So again, I'm you've been saying that you've been on that train for a long time. Yeah. It's just like, come on, don't lie to me. I, you know, we're not stupid anyway. Um, it's and that's what like a question I would definitely ask if I was at a scrum. So look out for that like six months later. But um, oh, it's the uh, you know the ticket sales also right. They sell more tickets because they're spread across so many different shows, and the pay per view buys are way better because there's multiple. Like that is in fact true. But you know you look in there and you're doing twenty five hundred people in a show while WWE is doing you know six seven eight thousand for house shows in like major <clears throat> you know. They came to Columbus, um, and they're coming again, I think, in the holiday area. <clears throat> they're, they're, they're doing Nationwide Arena, which, which is where the Blue Jackets play. Like, it's a big, you know, it's a, a big NBA, NHL arena. 
They're going to do 8,000 people in a major market for literally Seth Rollins and Damian yep. Priest doing their, their warm up match for a pay per view or whatever it's going to be. Right. So, like, there's no arguing that one is hotter than the other. And I think that you can delude yourself by saying, like, oh, yeah, we're doing way better than we were in 2020. But, you know, sometimes less is more. And we've been on this forever. I think everyone has. And yeah. it's always been a bad idea. Like you should expand when you get this next TV deal coming up. If you're going to expand, yeah. not before, but here we are. Yeah, I think you're right, man. I think you're right. Well, the latest play, the latest uh, kind of uh, what I would call, you know, a hot shot ratings grab is mm-hmm. running with MJF versus Kenny Omega uh, Saturday night on collision tomorrow night. Um, a couple days notice for that. Um, Make that what you will. I, my thought on this is like that this is not a bad match to put on television. It's also not, um, how do I put this? It's also not, you know, bad to hot shot this, this kind of thing. Um, because there is a story there. Like, the, like you've got the, the, the record. You know, you got the longest reigning world champion of all time, like kind of hanging in the balance. They've alluded to it on a couple different, uh, in a couple different places earlier, you know, and a couple weeks ago, and then weekly since then. So I don't, I don't hate this from that perspective, but <laughs> it's hard to get behind because number one, you already know that Jay White is going to be facing MJF for the world title at full gear. I mean, they've promoted the hell out of that. And yeah. <clears throat> so unless something's changed with MJF's contract or like, they're like, Hey, look, we're not, you know, he's not resigning. So we're getting this belt off of him right away. Yeah. And you're going to make a humongous pivot and put the belt on Omega on Saturday night. Like, you know, the outcome. Like, you know what's going to happen here. Like, and I, and for this match, this first time ever match, I, I think it, you want more for that. I think you want fans to like go into it thinking, man, I wonder who's going to win. Um, and not, okay, how is this going to end? You know, like, how, what's the finish? What's the finish going to be? And I think that's where you're at. And like, to me, this is like non finished. This is Don Callis family getting involved or something mm-hmm. to that effect. And like, it just waters down one of the biggest matches that the company has. And so I'm in this place where I'm like, okay, I get it. You got to do something because the, the collision ratings are just are bad. You know, they're just in the, yeah. it's, it's, it's getting to be like a rampage level type show. And so a match like this helps elevate the stock of the show in general. And so I, I kind of, from that perspective, I'm like, okay, I get it, Tony Khan, but man, I mean, this is one of the biggest cards that you have left to play and you're playing it on a show that gets, you know, 70% of the dynamite audience on a Saturday night with world series baseball and the NBA and college football. And not to mention, you're going to have, you're clearly going to have a non-finish. And so I'm, I'm iffy on, on, on the strategy for that perspective. I would have saved this thing. I would have saved it. And, you know, built it up not to mention they're both baby faces and so it's like okay who are we supposed to who are we supposed to cheer here but that's that, that's usual aw bs <laughs> these days so even that aside i think it's a it's a it's not the correct call even though i understand that making it all valid points hard to argue let me give you one counterpoint though fine <laughs> <laughs> Wait, dude, they never do those in AEW. Oh, yeah, right. I'm just, You're right. yeah. Sorry, that's my usual uh, snarky attitude. Snarky Tyler guys. is here. But uh, yeah, I agree. I like the idea of the match. Yeah, I would like me it. too. Again, like like everything in AEW to be extended out a little bit to talk more than a week ago about the streak being being there. You know, also Kenny has a story to tell here that I think is what they're doing, but they're not elaborating that he is lost a lot of his singles matches, especially big time singles matches in the last six months. I mean, I think he's like what the last three pay-per-view matches he's lost. Lost in, in yep. singles competition. 
Like this would be another huge loss for him. Like, what does that mean for his character? Like, is he going on that Jericho losing streak that Jericho also hasn't like, he kind of alluded to it on his interview this week on dynamite that like things Mm -hmm. need to change or does he need to think about slowing down, but he's pivoting and not slowing down. Like at least there's some acknowledgement there, but there's a story to tell there on you chasing what you once were. I think that could be good, but yeah, just frame it a little bit better. And yeah, yeah, Cal going to come in and all that stuff. And, you know, I would also like Kenny to be like, you know, kind of be patronizing a little bit like that baby face, but like, you know, he's Kenny, right? He's like, he's confident. He's more confident than MJF is as a, as a baby face in this moment. Um, Arrogant, you know, is a better term, but like, he could have been like, Hey bud, when I beat you and like do like the new Japan, like tap on the chest thing, like, when I beat you, we'll make it a triple threat match at uh, at full gear. You know, I'll give you your rematch there. And then that's like, okay, well, they're still not going to give – it's not going to come off MJF, but now we'll, at, least, at least we've established, like, what's going to happen so we know that there right. is a 1% possibility. And right. that's all about editing, right? That's going like, hey, Kenny, you're going out here to do this. Just make sure you – you can say whatever you want. Just do this for me. And yeah. if you do that, then that helps build the match. And, you know, in a vacuum, I like setting up – from dynamite to collision, a big match. Yep. Like, you know, you could do something like it'd be better if it was like Copeland versus, I don't know, somebody who, uh, I don't know, whatever. I'm not, I'm not a booker, but like there's things like to continue this trend, I think is a good idea to be like set up some cool stuff from dynamite to collision. They haven't done that, but yeah, in general, you know, just like anything, it's the same critique we usually have with the booking pattern. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, I just, I mean, it's, it's just a huge match. I mean, it's like, the biggest matches they can put on, you know? Um, and so to see it go like this, it's like, okay, I get yeah. it. You, your promoter, you got to get, you got to get people watching on Saturday night. And it is in our, our chat here, Sean jumping in. They're doing it because they want to pop a rating, but there's no way Omega is winning. I think a lot of people feel that same way, which leads me to believe, <laughs> leads me to ask the question, well then how do you pop a rating with this then if everybody knows what's going to happen? And and that's, I think the innate inherent problem with, with, with doing this as much as you might want to. Zach disagrees. Disagree, Sean. Kenny wants to protect his record and that makes sense or something to that effect. Kenny wanting to protect his record makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, it does. He's not really worthy of a title shot right now, but it does. I think it still it still makes it still makes some makes some sense. Um, yeah, do you think there's any chance that Kenny Omega wins this? I mean, I, I don't. Not even like a one percent. Just everything you laid out. Um, yeah, totally. you know, unless MJF was hurt and some something, you know, in that literally in that match against Juice that we don't know about, and he's got to drop it, but less than you know that. Even if <clears throat> even if he's Worst case scenario, not resigning, go to WWE. I think Jay White beats him. You don't need to right. do that here. So, yeah, because you can always have. Then you're like blowing up your Kenny Jay White match for a hot shot. When that's also one of the bigger matches you can play within AEW. That the vast majority of the audience is not seeing that match. So, um, you know, you'd be hot shotting that too, and we'd have, be having the same discussion on like, should we build to like all in twenty twenty four for this type of match? Then, then a two week build to a pay-per-view. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think, yeah, I think that, that, yeah, even if he is leaving, you know, <laughs> you, 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 you put Jay White over and then, you know, and leave the Kenny match still, still out there. So yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, let's pivot here before we, uh, before we wrap up and go record our member only show. Um, we a pretty big moment on NXT this week, and we don't talk a ton about NXT on this show. Um, but wanted to talk about it here on a couple different levels. Becky Lynch in the main event um, loses the NXT Women's Championship clean to Lyra Valkyria. Um, good match, not a great match by any means, um, but but solid. Um, what do you think of, of of Lynch doing this job clean in this in this slot in this environment? You know, would did. I don't. I didn't expect it to come here, um, but it did. And uh, and looking back, I'm like, oh, it wasn't the wrong. It wasn't the wrong decision. I don't think. Yeah, it just feels like the right time to to like transition her out, out of there. And I think we'll talk more about that in the the patron show. I think is the plan. But yeah, it felt like 
you're going to get got the most juice you can squeeze out of the Becky Lynch story down there. And you put over Lyra, Lyra, my, my Booker T here, mispronouncing her name. So, um, okay, Booker. yeah, but uh, yeah, you put her over. And for people like me that are not watching on a weekly basis, now she's on my radar. Obviously, that's a big win. So that signals to me as a, as a fan that they have high hopes for her. And, uh, you know, I'm sure if it's booked correctly, we'll see a rematch on the main roster in a few years. And it'll use the story just like Charlotte and Rio. You know, they did the same sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I think it's fine. And, you know, it gives a reason to watch NXT. I'm sure. What was the rating? Do you have that off the top of your head? Uh, it was over. It was like 770. Yeah. Something. So, I mean, having Still the match strong. helps. Yeah. And then you give her the the, the big, biggest chance to be a big star. So, you know, I like it in general. I don't think it hurts Becky because she's still Becky and, you know, half the raw audience watched it anyway. They'll see it and be like, okay, cool. I'm just ready for her to be back. And she comes up and, you know, it's a big pop that she's back and ready to go for the main, main roster. So. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I liked it too. I, I thought it was fine, and I thought it was like the only way it was going to go, or the only way it should go. Like the goal of Becky Lynch down in NXT was to get more eyes on the NXT product, which she has, put over and make a couple of new stars, which she has. Like mission accomplished with with that whole with the whole journey. I mean, she worked some some matches with some younger talent down in NXT. She had two matches, including a pay-per-view match with Tiffany Stratton. I think people now look at Tiffany differently. Mm-hmm. She does the job here for Lyra Valkyria. And it's done in a way where it's clean, but it's also like not definitive. It's not like boom, stunner, pin one, two, three. It was you know, roll up. And, it, and there is like a difference in tone, I think, within a finish of a match like that, even if it is clean. <clears throat> Um, it's a little bit unexpected. It's a little jarring. It's a little bit of like, oh wow, she she won, but it's a little lucky there, a little surprise you'd win. And I think so. I think that works. Um, so I think it was the only way that it could go. You can't have, like, uh, you can't have Becky Lynch roll through everybody on the NXT roster because that doesn't do anybody any good. Yeah, including Becky. You know, because you want her to start making some stars that she can work with it someday, you know, up on the main roster. So, so yeah, so I like this. Um, and Zach did not Becky Lynch losing on, on NXT stunned me. She shouldn't be getting pinned by anyone in NXT. She's so far above them. She is, she is. I, I think that's a reasonable argument, but you know, Zach, the goal here was to make a couple new stars like that clearly was the was the goal and if she doesn't lose to anybody in nxt then what like what happens after that like Mm -hmm. i think you have you know valkyria is going to be talking about this for a while becky put her over raised her arm up and now becky moves back to raw and hopefully has and hopefully has some uh you know some you know something ready made to do and i think Ripley is that person. I mean, that's going to be big business, I think, early next year. So we'll see. But I, I, I liked it. How many times can WWE go to the well with this, Tyler, in terms of, like, bringing, you know, a main roster talent down for a short stint and then doing some business, do the job, and then, and then move on? Like – is this a formula in your eyes that can be replicated until the end of time? Or this is just like, Hey, do it now, try to increase viewership. And then you got to back off, you know, and pull back on it. Yeah. Where are you at? I have two answers for you. I certainly think this will be replicated a lot. The ratings proved that this is a, a, a way to make this work. I don't think it's great long-term, right? I think Becky's in a unique spot yeah. that she's so over no matter what she does that it works. Like even Seth, right? We'll just compare the two. If Seth goes down there, I feel like it lowers him more than it lowered Becky. And why is that? I can't really tell you. It just feels like a lessening for him compared to her. Like she's just like, Seth seems like a guy, like it seems more forced. Like Becky's character, it seems like she would just go down there because she wants to beat people and have a, you know, have that title. It just feels like she decided to do that one day and that, that works for her character. And Seth's character I don't know. I just don't believe that as much. I believe it. It just feels a little more like a corporate decision. I think that hurts it. And, 
you know, I think he's certainly a candidate to do it. You know, it's different, you know, when you have um, Tyler Breeze go down there, Baron Corbin go down there, Dolph Ziggler go down there. Like, that's a different story. Uh, Apollo Crews, right? Like, that's that's fine because they're, like, that level. Like, if Chad Gable went down there and worked an awesome NXT title match, I think that'd be super cool. But, like, right. those, those top guys going down there, I think, is bad long term because you have to do this right here. It's got to be the right person as that person salvageable, right? Like if Seth goes down there and another point on this later, but if Lexus King beats him, let's say for that title, like, does that helps, you know, that helps Lexus, but does that help Does Seth like get hurt by that? Like, I think more so there than, um, than, than Becky was. And I don't really have a good reason for it. It's just like how I feel. And I think a lot of people would yeah. feel the same way. Also second point on that. I love the presentation of Lexus King. And I think it's very smart by WWE to basically, if you leave AEW and come to WWE, we're going to like make you a special character and like you'd be dumb not to come over here is definitely the strategy. And it's like so smart. Um, and I'd be pissed if I was Tony Khan because he does the exact opposite. So it's just like a mirror. Yes. Too. <laughs> well, and it's like, it's different too. I mean, obviously with Cody, like there's more to it than that because like, yeah. Oh, he had a made character and a lot of that character is the same, but like Brian Pillman jr. I mean, like that guy was nobody. I mean, he was an absolute nobody, you know, yeah. and now he can come in and, and, and go and do, you know, do the Lexus King thing. I, I, I you guys got to get over to the names, like the names, like, I, come on, like, like Becky Lynch isn't like a great name. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, Bailey isn't like a great name. Yeah. Seth Rollins you know, is a horrible a, name. Seth Rollins isn't a good name. Dean Ambrose yeah. isn't like a Roman Reigns. Come I, on. Like Tyler Black is a way better name. Colby way Lopez. Better. His real name is way better than Seth Rollins. Yeah. You know? So. Like the name, like you guys gotta get over the name thing. I re- and it, not just not just you, Zach. I don't I'm not just picking yeah. on you. But like I hear it so much like with all these names and like Gunther and it was like the name before that was Walter. Like yeah. okay. Like it, well, come on. Butch is, Butch is still the funniest one to me ever, though. Just to like go, but, from... yeah, Butch. But now everybody's kind of forgot about Butch. It's just yeah. like, oh, there's Butch. That's whatever, <laughs> you know. So you know, I don't know. The name doesn't bother and, me, but the presentation is yeah. very strong for him, man. Yeah, I, he's basically his dad, right? Yeah. Like he looks just like his dad. I mean, obviously it's his son, but like the presentation there. But then also like the uh, like the king thing actually being utilized, like and the so, like you know, NXT's always been good at that like stuff. Like, does that? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I cut you off. No, no, no. I think you're right. You're right. The presentation is good. What I what I worried about with with him this week was like, mm-hmm. I like the presentation, but I I don't know. And again, it's just a it's a feel thing. Mm-hmm. I, I I watched him and I was like, ooh, ugh, there's something missing with the performance. Like there's some like the presentation was on point. I don't know that his work like lived up to the presentation. Like I, I think he still has a long way to. I think he's still has a long way to go like in terms yeah. of like making that character feel um authentic i guess like i i, I don't know and he yeah. could have been nervous too i think but i think that there i think he needs like to level up his game a little bit too yeah well that's why i said presentation because he's bobby know, Roode. That, yeah. he's got big bobby root energy right now right um, now yes so yes. which is not bad i mean you get you can make a lot of money being bobby root so oh for sure and 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 I and I, I agree with you on the on the, the Becky thing. It's so funny because that was going to be my exact take. Like, <laughs> she works with this. Mm. Dominic works with this, and I think a lot of it. And I, and I tried to figure out. I tried to like dig deeper into like why is it that talents like that that are at two totally different levels can work. Mm. And I think the the reason that I keep going back to is like the Teflon nature. Like Dom is a heel doesn't matter what happens yeah. to him at this point like people like to boo him he's in the middle of the card he can lose he can win and and that's that becky i think is the exact same way people love her you know no matter what and you can like play that that story out as you said where it makes sense for her to come down whereas like you know when cena comes down it's 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 a thing but it's like this is obviously what it is which is just we're trying to pop a rating with john cena becky and dom feel more like 
you know, integrated and like less, less mm-hmm. of a forced, of a forced move. And I don't, I don't, I don't even know, man. I, I can't think of too many like major needle movers like Becky Lynch that are on the WWE main roster that can come down. I mean, you're not going to have Seth do it every week. You're not going to have like Jay. I don't think that makes a lot of sense for him to do it. You know, uh, I mean, I think Gunther, you know, you could accept that like, he's kind of like Seth in which, which is like Gunther is not doing the job, a job down there at this point, or he shouldn't be in my, in my eye. So, the list of people, like maybe Bailey, you know, she may be somebody that you could do it with. Um, but it's a short list, <clears throat> is my point. And I think because of that, I don't I think they'll go to the well in terms of like getting main roster talent down on that show. But mm-hmm. I don't know how many people there are where you could go on like a you know, eight week story arc with it, like like they just did with Becky and like they're doing with, with Dom right now. I just think that talent needs to be perfect for that slot yeah. and there's not a lot of it on there i think you know i think bailey's a good um woman to go down there i think for the male side i think ko would fit right now because he's not really doing a yeah ton. Would, yep, 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 yep. And it, but it'd be, have to be like as part of a heel turn because you kind of want to lead into that nxt persona of of past and yes. like him him like you know apron bombing a couple people would, would be pretty dope and that could correlate to him coming back up to the main roster as a heel and, you know, him coming up, beating a couple people, doing a job, which fit. And he's still cool. And he's has history with that belt, right? Like, that's also a key. Right. Like, I think you have to previously have held that belt. And you're coming back down to kind of, like, reestablish who you are in that space as it's now a bigger right. show. And that, like, yeah. all of them as a heel can come and thank you and kiss kiss the ring that you made this possible. And then they can combat that, like, no, we made this. That sort of story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. All right, guys, we'll wrap it up there. We will put a bow on it. Uh, Thank you so much to everybody who tuned in live. Thanks to everybody who has listened after the fact, either here on the YouTube channel or on your favorite podcast feed, which the show will land there in in, in minutes. Um, So thank you, thank you, thank you. You can check us out every single week, Friday, late morning, just like this right here on YouTube. We do a free version of our show, and then we head out and we record our member only version and you can get access to the member only version of the show member only written contact on our uh, content excuse me on our sub stack access to our discord community and a whole mess of other stuff um, if you become a brass ring media member and we certainly would appreciate it patreon.com backslash brass ring media uh thanks to sean here uh always oh nope yeah. always fun guys become a patron Please do. Please do. We certainly appreciate it. It's $4. Um, hopefully that can fit in your budget and we will make sure to get uh, to give you back like some full value. Um, next week we'll be live with uh, we'll be talking a lot about Crown Jewel, which will be happening um, a little over a week from right now. And uh, yeah, we'll have our, our preview show for that. And we'll also, you know, obviously next weekend have our uh, post pay-per-view crown jewel review here for, for, for members as well. So now's a great time to give us a try. Patreon.com backslash brass ring media. Tyler, my friend. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Thank you. See you guys. Appreciate you guys.